the commercial area there, the residents there, I talked to a lot of them. They really appreciate the fact that their street is calmed, not intentionally perhaps, but it is calm nevertheless. Uh, I cycle through it quite often. It's, it's a delight to cycle through because in fact nobody goes more down that street at more than 40k. They just don't. Uh, and, and as a cyclist you feel uh, your speed is not that different at times from the car speeds and it's much less safer. I'm hoping we get more and more streets like that in Saanich and where we have them already, I hope we are careful to protect those values as they change and develop. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Murdoch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too will be supporting this uh, going to a public hearing. I think certainly uh, it, it's worthy of a, a discussion and I look forward to uh, hearing from residents in the area, more of the residents in the area, as a result of the notification of, of the application moving forward. Uh, I, you know, we didn't hear a lot about the parking challenges in the area tonight, but I, I do recognize that that's going to be a, a, a bit of a challenge uh, uh, for, for what will take place here. I mean, that's not the fault of the applicant by putting an, an additional home here, but it does have the potential to exacerbate an existing challenge. Um, you know, I, I, uh, Councillor Dermot and I often agree on, on issues with respect to pedestrians and cyclists, but in this case, I think the prospect of the changes coming to the commercial property that's adjacent to this are going to quite dramatically, I think, or at least have the potential to dramatically transform what's been described as a fairly idyllic, uh, slow-moving slow laneway into, a, I think, a regular street. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we need to bear that in mind as we anticipate the changes that are going to take place here. Um, I have no insight into what's possibly going to happen in that adjacent property, but I suspect it will have an impact um, irrespective of what's proposed here this evening. So, uh, just something for consideration. And I don't disagree with the intention to preserve those, uh, the qualities of those laneways where they, where they do exist. Um, so I'm supportive. I, I think the applicant has done a good job of, of uh, uh, hearing concerns and, and trying to be respectful of the existing neighborhood. And I look forward to hearing from, from the applicant and, and residents in the area at a public hearing. Great. Thank you. Councillor Sanders, and then Councillor Haynes, and then Councillor Price. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will be supportive of this project going forward. I think it has uh, looked at many things that could be considered. I believe it's a good location. It's a, a good infill, a, a small lot. And yes, there. Are, I, I just looked at the GIS, and there's no examples in the community of this kind of a small application. I would caution if indeed the applicant said that there would be no secondary suite, that might um, be added into the recommendation of, of accompanying that and such. So it's no surprise for the neighborhood down the road. Uh, there will be changes to Cobb Lane. The last speaker, Carl Cavanaugh, who was one of the first members of the Quadra City Health Community Association Executive, will recall when um, Tidman's brought forward a very large retirement pro pro um, proposal for the, the Bank of Montreal and the medical building there, and, and the owners of this lot that is now coming, not, not this person, but these properties along Cobb Lane were certainly opposed to that. So not that something like that in the future would happen, but certainly there, there will be some development there that will impact this whole neighborhood and, and have the potential of changing Cobb Lane substantially. And, and there is already something happening at the former BMO site. Uh, when I mentioned about the tree, I think you know that would be an important thing to look at. Not that I'm a specialist on this, but I think privacy and, and sound control, because sound area is also so very important. Uh, over the years, there have been issues with the poplar trees along there because they love water and uh, it, it's a damp area and they uh, certainly can come up the roots of everybody's houses. I, I would um, and just re reiterate what I said about the conflict with the adjacent property of a par parking. Uh, yeah, I think this is worthy of going ahead. I think all the details have been uh, looked at and I, I look forward to if this goes ahead to the public hearing. Councillor Haynes. Yeah. Um, through the chair, um, I like this proposal. I did drive out there and have a look at the street. I made a couple of brief questions, but first of all, compliments on Bill Green. Um, also, it's a, it is an opportunity for Sands to obtain some road right way, and it's, if it's a challenge on Colby, imagine what it's going to be on Shelburne Valley. Um, however, um, having said that, um, on the storm management, 
um, system, the idea of putting tanks, and this would be a question to the engineer um, through the mayor, please. Um, when we put storm management tanks in, they're holding tanks, is there the option to give a gravel bottom so the water can go straight into the water table, or do they have a concrete bottom and then flow over into the pipes? Through the mayor to Councillor Haynes, uh, that's actually, actually how they are designed. They do have an opportunity to infiltrate into the ground. Uh, but should that not occur, then they have uh, an overflow uh, onto it. So it, uh, it, it slows down and, and avoids the peak uh, flow and into our system, um, and it gives it an opportunity to train to the ground. Thank you for that for clarification, because we know we are looking at watershed and watershed management. I think that's a good feature of this, and adds to its appeal for me. Um, I wonder, will it have a cob lane address when it's done? I imagine it will. I don't know. I'm just... That's not an important question, I'm just curious about that. Um, certainly um, the name Lane, Cobb Lane, um, indicates charm, indicates a slower pace of life. But I do understand that with the changes coming on Cook and the development there, nothing stands still. And I noted in our letters that there was a January the 5th, 1994 letter. And then I read a November the 5th, 2014 letter, 20 years later, and the same case Word for word is being made, so it's been a it's been an island of tranquility in a way for 20 years, and uh, a little bit of change is coming. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Is there hand up? Yes, th Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will be supporting this going forward. I must say, when I first looked on the agenda and saw that we had an item from Hill Valley Terrace, <laughs> uh, I was just kind of on heavy alert because it is an area which is so special and has such a history and a lot of drama around it and so I was very pleasantly surprised to see what the application was but I still came to the meeting um, with some questions um, I will um, compliment uh, John Schmuck and the Community Association for having looked at this. I mean, obviously, we don't need to tell the Community Association there about how special Clovelly and, and Cobb Lane are because uh, uh, they, they live right there. Um, but they do, in five of their points that they kind of are on the alert about, four of them are regarding traffic. And of course, that is always one of the, uh, the issues. I agree with uh, Councillor Sanders that it would be good, even uh, a home that's being built on slab, to have a, a covenant uh, indicating no suites, because I think that signals any future um, development in the area as well as to what an expectation for uh, infill in this particular area might uh, might entail. But uh, I think all in all, it's um, it's worthwhile going to public hearing. Councilor Ruben. Thank you, Mayor. I do support going to public hearing also, and I believe it is good infill, and I compliment the applicant on working with the community and talking to him and where he was going. The comment I just have to staff, and we always look at ways to notify the community, and I wonder if we could consider, not just on this application, but on future applications, that when the applicant knows it's going to public hearing, if a simple date could be put on the rezoning sign indicating on such and such a day it's going to public hearing. It would be just another way, it would be a simple way of notifying the neighbors just in case they don't get their letter and they've forgotten about it. Thank you. Any more discussion from Council? Seeing none, I'll call the question on this recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried now. So thank you. So the last item that we have in hand is the board, so I'll look for a motion to adjourn the meeting and move back to council. Second by Councilor Merrick, all the questions are on the table. Opposed? Opposed? Carried absolutely. Madam Merrick, I'm now going to have a breath. Is that correct? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We do need the uh, first item, the 998 Gorge Road West, to be ratified. Yes. I'll call the question that all in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried absolutely. And read this in full so you just bear with me. The motion to close the meeting according to section 91A of the community charter related to personal information about identifiable individual being considered for a position appointed by the municipality. 
So moved. Second. Thank you for that. I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried out. Thank you. Ask the members of the public to leave so that we can move into closed meeting. Thank you.